In the second session of our Turbo Machinery CFT simulation training, we're going to show you how you can use the Single Reference Frame or SRF to simulate the rotating motion of impellers inside a mixing tank. Alright, as you can see here, we have imported the geometry of a mixer inside the Fluent Solver and what we're going to do next is to show you how we can set up the problem using the Single Reference Frame Motion. Uh, for the first step, uh, we actually enable the gravity and then as you can see here, we set its value equal to minus 9.81 in the Z direction. And then I'll go expand the model section and then double click on the viscous button so that I can enable uh, one of the turbulent models. As you can see here, uh, what I'm going to select is the K epsilon, actually the standard K epsilon model to solve for the turbulent fluid equations. And also under the nearval treatment section, you can see that I have let its default option to be selected as well, which is the standard roll functions, which are actually auxiliary functions that help us capture the flow patterns near the wall boundaries. Alright, for the next step, uh, what we have to do is to define a material which would be inside our uh, domain. To do that, actually, I have to expand the material section, go over fluid, for example, and then right click on it and then select new. After clicking on the new in the appeared window, you either can define the properties of the material you want to define in your domain by simply defining its density and viscosity by yourself and manually, or you can simply click on Fluent Database and select your desired material from the list of available materials in the Fluent Software. Uh, in this project, the material uh, that I'm going to select is Water Liquid, uh, which its properties is already defined in the Fluent Software, so I simply click on Fluent Database to select it. Uh, now, as you can see here, in the newly appeared window, I scroll down and simply select the Water Liquid material and then click on Copy. Now, for the next step, as you saw in the previous slides, we actually uh, added the water liquid material under the material section. Now it's time to assign the water liquid material to its right zone. Uh, so uh, we have to actually expand the cell zone condition, expand the fluid section as well, and then double click on the flow zone. All right, uh, the first thing that you should do here, as I mentioned, is to change the material name, for example, from air to water liquid. And then, for the most important part, uh, we have to enable the frame motion option. After enabling the frame motion option, you can see that under the reference frame tab, actually the window changes a little bit and you can see that you actually are able to define some settings such as defining rotation axis origin, rotation axis direction and so on. Uh, however, the most important part here is to actually define the value for the rotational velocity uh, so that actually the domain which we are talking about here would start rotating when we hit the calculation button. Uh, now, in order to define the rotational velocity here, as you can see here, the unit defined for this speed is set uh, to be radians per second. Uh, if we actually want to change this unit, we can simply go under the general section and then click on the units button. After clicking on the units button, in this newly appeared window under the quantities, uh, I actually search for the angular velocity and click on it. And then under the unit section, you can see that I am able to select among three different uh, units for the angular velocity parameter. Uh, what I'm going to select is revolutions per minute. Uh, and the reason behind this selection is that uh, I would have a physical sense of the rotational speed of my uh, reference frame. All right, after selecting uh, revolutions per minute uh, for the desired unit of the angular velocity, if you come back to the reference frame tab, you can see that in front of the rotational velocity speed, its unit would actually change from radian per second to revolution per minute. 
and uh, next as the value that we are going to input and enter for the rotational speed we enter the value of 500 revolutions per minute and next it's time to define the needed settings for the boundary conditions uh, as you saw in the previous slides, when we enable the frame motion option and then we define a rotational velocity for our domain, uh, it is like that the whole domain, even the walls, start to rotate. But uh, we actually do not want that. We simply want the fluid inside our domain to rotate. Therefore, the trick here is to define a zero rotational velocity for our walls. Uh, for the first step, uh, we actually uh, double click on the outer wall boundary. After double clicking on the outer wall boundary in the period window under the wall motion, uh, simply change it from station wall to moving wall. And then under the motion section, select rotational. Now, as you can see here uh, under the motion section, when the motion of the selected wall is relative to adjacent cell zone and its value is equal to zero revolutions per minute, uh, it is like that the whole outer wall boundary would be rotating with a rotational velocity equal to the rotational velocity of the whole domain. Therefore, if we want our outer wall boundary to be stationary, rather than having a rotational motion we have to select absolute under the motion section and then make sure that we leave the value of its speed equal to zero therefore the software would understand that uh, the absolute rotational speed of the outer wall boundary is equal to zero while the whole domain and the cell zone still rotates with 500 revolutions per minute Okay, now, uh, in order to, for some of you to better understand uh, what exactly happened and what we exactly did in the previous slide, I'm going to explain the same phenomenon and same setting that I did over the outer wall boundary in another way using the inner wall boundary. The inner wall boundary is actually the impeller and uh, the mixing blade inside the tank. Okay, now before going any further and explaining anything, I have to tell you that you can actually leave the settings shown here to its default, or you can follow my lead and uh, actually do whatever I tell you to do. Both of these conditions would be okay. Uh, and the reason behind that is uh, if you actually uh, see under the wall motion, you can see that by, by its default, it is set to be a stationary wall. However, under the motion, motion section, you can see that uh, the relative to adjacent cell zone option is enabled, however it cannot be changed since you have selected the station ripple. Uh, but in order for you to have a better understanding of inner workflow of the frame motion technique, I'm going to tell you what will happen if I enable the motion wall option. As was explained earlier, if you enable the moving wall option under the motion sections, uh, you have to select the rotational option among uh, three available options of uh, translational, uh, rotational, and components because uh, we have defined uh, the frame motion technique and we want our cell zones to have a rotating motion. So we select rotational and then above it, uh, be between the two options of relative to adjacent cell zone and absolute I simply select keep actually keep the relative to adjacent cell zone selected uh, because I want this boundary to be rotating with the same rotating velocity as my cell zone now if I select the absolute option I have to make sure that I enter the value of rotational speed equal to 500 revolutions per minute uh, because we want my impellers to be rotating at 500 revolutions per minute or have the equal rotational velocity as my cell zone. So as I mentioned, I keep the relative to adjacent cell zone option selected and then leave the value of the speed equal to zero so that the impellers or the mixers inside the tank would be rotating with an equal, with an, uh, rotational uh, velocity equal to the cell zone which was defined in the frame motion technique in previous slides. 
Uh, then for the next step, I'm going to actually select the solving algorithm. So I double click on the methods button. As you can see here, uh, under the pressure velocity coupling, uh, I changed the scheme from coupled to simple because the problem we are solving here is not that complicated and the simple algorithm can easily deal with it. And then for the next step, I double click on the initialization button and simply click on initialize button. Uh, it also should be mentioned that uh, there is no difference uh, which method of initialization you select, hybrid or standard, there's no difference. After initializing the solution, we can simply double click on the run calculations button to start the calculation and the simulation. After double clicking on the run calculations button under the parameters section, you have to enter the number of iterations you want your simulation process to be continued. For example, for this uh, specific problem, which is not a very complicated problem, uh, 500 iterations would be enough. Then after defining a number of iterations, you can simply click on calculate so that the simulation process starts. Okay, after the simulation was finished, in order to extract graphical data, we first have to create some planes. Uh, to do that, we simply go over surfaces, as you can see here, right click on it, go over new and then select plane. Alright, in this specific problem, uh, we are going to actually create two perpendicular planes. Uh, the first plane which we are creating uh, in the peer window actually, under the method, we have to select XY plane and then underneath it, in front of the Z, we enter the value of 0 and then we click on create. After creating the first plane, in the same window, in, under the method section, select YZ plane, and then underneath it, in front of the X, make sure that the value of zero is entered. Again, hit the create button so that your second plane is created underneath the first plane. Okay, after creating the two needed planes, uh, it's time to expand the graphics and extract some graphical data. So after expanding the graphics section, double click on the contours button. In the appeared window, under the contours of section, you can select among different parameters and variables that exist here. For example, as you can see here, in this slide, I have selected the parameter or variable of velocity. Uh, under the surfaces section then, you can select over which surface you want to extract contours related to this variable. Uh, as was mentioned before, we want to extract graphical data over two uh, planes which we generated in the previous slides. Therefore, we select plane number two and plane number three, which are our two generated planes. And now by hitting the button save or display, you would see that the software uh, shows you the contours of velocity magnitude over the two generated planes. Now as you can see in the graphics window, uh, since the whole DOM in, uh, rotates, you can see a radial velocity distribution inside our DOM. In. Uh, it also should be mentioned that if you can remember correctly, we set our outer wall boundary to have a zero velocity or zero rotational velocity. And as you can see here, if you pay attention to the velocity of the water flow near the outer wall boundary, you can see that uh, the velocity adjacent to the outer wall boundary has value of zero due to the no slip boundary condition. Also, if you wish to extract another variable's contour in the same video, you can simply change the contours of section, for example, from velocity to pressure. And then, uh, for example, by leaving the selected surfaces to be our uh, generated plane and then clicking on Save or Display button, the software will show you the pressure distribution over the same planes. Uh, you can extract other graphical data beside contours. For example, if you want to see the velocity vectors and how they are distributed showing the rotational velocity of our domain, you can simply double click on the vectors. 
and then in the appeared window under the ve uh, vector is off you can see that I have selected the velocity parameter so that the vectors shown inside uh, my computational domain uh, are classified based on their velocity value uh, next under the surfaces section uh, if you want to for example see the velocity vectors uh, over the two generated plane uh, we can simply select the mentioned planes here simply and then by clicking on the saver display button the software will show you the velocity vector distribution over the selected surfaces and finally as you can see here the distribution of the velocity vectors clearly show the rotational velocity uh, inside our computational domain To benefit from Mr. CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com or visit our website www.mrcfd.com.